right into it. So would you please kick us off with a brief take, you know, from a vulnerability management perspective and what our uh, customers are trying to achieve, you know, why is automation such a big part of what we do here at Nucleus? Yeah, so um, really the, uh, the the challenge of vulnerability management is uh, is becoming more and more complicated, more and more complex, right? Technology is expanding. Uh, the risk, um, I would say risk is increasing mostly because we're starting to move more and more to computer-based process and systems, right? And so the impact is, uh, is much greater. And, um, and then also you've, you have growing organizations, growing teams, you've got technologies that by, uh, by nature are more distributed, right? Uh, moving towards microservices, you know, shift left as well is, is expanding what's in scope. So um, everything is growing, right? And the way that organizations are able to uh, uh, adapt to the pace of change is essentially through automations, right? And, and fundamentally automations, that's, that's one of the last steps of your vulnerability management program is there has to be um, all of the necessary information in place and processes in place to where you, you have what you need to make automatic and informed decisions, right? So automations right. is critical to how organizations can grow and scale, not having to throw bodies at the problem, but being able to react to changes more intelligently. Right. Um, but it, it really requires that all of that information is in a, in a single place and that it's accessible to make those decisions as well. Got it. And you mentioned something that I've talked about in a recent episode, which is throwing bodies at the problem, where in our current circumstances in the talent pool for cybersecurity, it's really not, it's becoming not possible to throw more bodies at the problem because there are less talented people around doing cybersecurity. So um, I read an article recently where I think it was 60, 80% of CIOs, you know, put automation as a very high priority in their organization security program. So, uh, or just, IT in general. So, um, so everything, as you said, everything's expanding, more tools, more data, everything's getting more complex. So it becomes necessary to automate a lot of these things because the environments are so complex, right? And you just don't have enough um, man or person power to handle all these things, right? Yeah, yeah. That's I mean that's exactly right. It's um, the uh, the the talent pool is small. Mm -hmm. The problem is growing. And so you have kind of these conflicting forces where how do you do more with less, right? Right. Um, and, and automation is a, a critical piece in that. Right, right. And so um, to the meat of our topic, you know, what, what types of processes, vulnerability management processes can users automate with Nucleus? Yeah, so I, I like to kind of think about the vulnerability management lifecycle. Right. Um, there's the the scanning discovery phases. Right. And oftentimes these are scheduled within the scanners. Right. So right. the scanners themselves, you're scheduling when you're doing scans. And oftentimes there's very deliberate scan windows. You don't want an unplanned scan to bring down a production system mm -hmm. or to trigger an IDS or cause any type of disruption. And so there, there's thoughtful coordination of scans themselves. And then in coordination with that, bringing them into a unified plane, uh, it's bringing in the scans after they've been run, right? So right. we do automatic ingestion of scans. And so we, what we see our customers doing is coordinating, all right, when are we getting new scans? And then when do we wanna pull in those new scans? You don't wanna scan on a Tuesday, but Monday night pull in scans, cause then you'll have, you know, seven day old data. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's stale data. Sure. So. Um, so you want to coordinate that to, to keep uh, in lockstep with how you're automating and scheduling your scans themselves. There's also um, automated workflows that, that folks will do around asset management, right? And, and this is a really big next step of the vulnerability management lifecycle where as you're ingesting data, the, the workflows, prioritization, remediation, reporting, all of that builds on asset management. And so right. automating how you categorize assets um, uh, properly. And this often involves, I'm looking at a number of different systems. I've got a CMDB, but it only covers part of my assets. I've got some really great information mm -hmm. in AWS. So I reference that as well. Maybe one of my scanners has some good tags. And then we've got some spreadsheets over here that, uh, that other teams use for maintaining 
you know, code teams and uh, maybe we've got some code owner files and other repos, right? <laughs> and so data is scattered in a lot right. of different places. Right. And so being able to manage assets is really about getting that information in one place and then being able to pick and choose where the source of truth is for the different actions that you're doing, right? How serious right. are your assets? Where are those assets within the organization? Uh, to whom do they belong or what teams support those assets, right? And automatically doing that at scale. So, um, so Nucleus is, is uh, both syncing the asset data from the different tools and unifying them in one place, which is the Nucleus console, and then also providing the ability to do things with those assets as they come into Nucleus. So maybe organizing them in a certain way, or as you said, like uh, letting Nucleus know how critical uh, these assets are to the business, those types yeah. of things. So all that, yeah. Right. So that that's a big step in in automating a vulnerability management program is that piece. Yeah, yeah. And and there are other other parts of the workflow as well, right? Mm -hmm. uh, findings you're also processing, right? I, I could run a scan even on my home network and get hundreds of findings, right? Right. It's, uh, I mean, organizations are overwhelmed with the sheer volume of findings. And so what they're doing is, they're applying automated workflows and actions to those findings. All right, we've got 10,000 criticals and highs, but when we look at threat intelligence, we've only got 40 widely exploited, or right. we only have a few zero days, or we only have a few Sysabod 2201 findings. Let's mm -hmm. focus on the greatest risk first and work our way down, right? So they're, they're performing operations automatically on findings and how they prioritize set SLAs, how they're assigning ownership mm -hmm. and tracking the mm -hmm. works, uh, workflow and life cycle. Similarly, they're automating ticketing, right? And remediations, routing to the right teams, orchestrating life cycle over time, right? You don't wanna have to go in and update and say, hey, well, we actually patched this finding on this asset. Can we update that ticket? You want that to happen automatically. And so you can focus on the fix rather than just getting data to move from one system to another. Right. Um, reporting is another area where we'll see automations, right? Being able to generate and schedule reports for audiences because oftentimes reviews, uh, actions and workflows, they're periodic and repeating, right? So every week I want to know at the beginning of the week what's out of SLA compliance. Every month I want to look at how my risk numbers are doing. Every quarter maybe I report to my C-suite on how our trends are, right? Trend analysis mm -hmm. and comparison of of different teams and team performance. So automating all of those end to end is really where organizations find that they can they can scale at the speed that they need and, and at the speed of the enterprise. Got it. And, and at the foundation of this automation and, and why the way we do automation is so valuable, a piece of it is that in Nucleus, you can leverage a lot of the vulnerability and asset metadata that we're pulling in from the different tools, right? And you can mm -hmm. use this data to create uh, very fine grain rules. Yes. Right. And that those fine grain rules are really necessary to orchestrating automation at the enterprise scale. Is that right? Yeah. And and so it's it's actually it's a couple of things there, right? Mm -hmm. It's having access to all the metadata at all times, right? So it's also not right. this ephemeral piece of data that's coming through during ingestion at the time that the connector executes. It's This is part of the overall data model and it's mm -hmm. accessible whether you're creating a ticket automation that's running miles down the road after we've ingested, we've set SLAs, we've assigned asset ownership, finding ownership, you know, we've, we've done all of that work. We still wanna be able to say, well, hey, if this belongs to this application team and we're pulling that from Sneak, then I want to be able to push that to to Nucleus in routing to the proper Jira project. Right. So being able to access metadata as part of the data model, not just an ephemeral piece of data that that comes and goes with the connector. And then you, you also have the, the notion of fine grain logic, mm -hmm. right? Being able to string together conditional operators, right? If this, then that and or right and chaining together actions also referencing actions based on other variables, right? Basically a level of indirection to where there's only one rule and that's pointing to this value. So we're updating and maintaining this one value and that's guiding this rule as it's executing. So really flexible rule building to where you have robust logical operators and logical conditions that you can construct 
and then also flexibility in where data can come from, whether it's on the action, action side or on the criteria side. All clear. That's awesome. Well, thanks so much, Aaron. Um, that's very clear. So there's really a lot of flexibility in how users can create rules and nucleus to suit their environment, to suit their process and how they do things, and also to suit the different tools they might be using across the enterprise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so before we wrap this, uh, this, this episode today, you know, is there any specific takeaway you would tell people to take away from this, this conversation and, you know, how Nucleus does automation specifically when it comes to the, to the metadata we, we expose? Yeah. If you're, if you're finding that you're struggling with managing your vulnerabilities at scale, mm -hmm. if you're finding that you're overwhelmed with vulnerabilities and the, in the sheer volume or, um, what's being presented to you as risk, uh, know that these are challenges that we help our customers with all the time. And, um, and, and we're doing so by getting all that information in one place, including enriching with things like threat intelligence, and then giving right. you the ability to easily construct and maintain automated workflows. So that way you can focus on fixing versus just stitching together a Frankenstein approach <laughs> of vulnerability management. So if you see those problems, take a look. We'd love to show you what we can do and uh, definitely feel like we can help with, uh, with solving some of those challenges. And you, you really, I know you get to see some uh, amazing Frankenstein vulnerability funnels that uh, enterprises so have so ingeniously built and now we're suffering the pain of having to maintain, right? Yeah. Where the engineer <laughs> in me is like, wow, that's so cool. You've built all of this complex code that looks like so much fun. But then the manager in me is like, oh my God, this is what we're managing. Like, what about the actual vulnerabilities? <laughs> right, right. How much time is spent managing that Frankenstein funnel versus actually doing the work of vulnerability mm -hmm. management, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh man. Well, that's a wrap. Aaron, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, we'll share any relevant links in the show notes. And um, we'll see you soon next time on Nuclear Shortcuts. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks for the time.